Shit. I just, I can't do this today. I, I just can't. Hey everybody, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes, yes, welcome back to the Paid Search Podcast, my name is Jason Rockman, as always I'm joined by the great Chris Schaefer, Chris, how's it going today, I like your... Mm. Mm-hmm. Flannel shirt? No, not flannel. Um, I'd pr- I prefer to focus on the uh, pearl snap buttons. That's really the flare that draws the eye. Pearl snap. You know what pearl snap is, right? Just top of the notch Western <laughs> wear. And it looks... It Western lo- wear. Yeah, looks great. You guys ever want any tips on uh, Western wear trends? Go somewhere else because I don't do that. But I do like these Western shirts. I do like um, Pearl Snap. They look good. And plus, look at this. See that? Boom. You just pull and it just pops right open. That sounded like a quality snap right there. Can you oh, do, yeah. that, do that again? Uh-uh. Nope. Just once. Just once. And guys, if you want to see that, not just hear it, we do have a Patreon that you can join for $2.00. And then you still can't see it. But then you ha- you double that. You pay $4. Then you can see it. Um, so just in case. Let's just drop that in and right at the front. Let's get to what's important is uh, Google Ads. What we can deliver and what we can talk about. Real world stuff. That's why people join our Patreon. Because we talk about real stuff. We talk about real stuff in our main podcast show. And then we get even more real. We get gritty, disgusting, nasty real in our Patreon. And we talk about Google Ads. And today... Jason's going to talk about his experience with automatic bidding. I never thought, I never thought I'd hear about it, but uh, I think it's going to be. Uh, I'm excited to hear about it. We don't discuss it a lot, and sometimes I kind of feel like everybody considers us to be behind the times, you know, not with the current trends. But. Um, that's the topic. And well, the thing I've al- I've always said about automated bidding is I use it, <laughs> and then I had a def- I, I that's what I always said, and then I had a defensive no, phase where not. everyone was just pushing it and pushing it and pushing it, and I pushed back against that, and I said, well, I only do auto uh, manual bidding, but my whole thing since the beginning was I will try automated strategies. I try them out sometimes. I prefer manual bidding uh, when I can, and most of the time, but I do try out the automated bidding, but I went through that phase where I wasn't doing a lot of it, but now I've, I've opened back up to it. And we're going to talk about a test. I ran recently a couple different tests. We're going to talk about the results. Yep. We're going to talk about, um, just some general theory things about how we both think about running automated tests, how to run them. And then some more granular things like stuff we look for when the test happened, what to do if the tests go well, if they don't go well, um, and then in Patreon, we're going to talk about uh, target CPA bidding, the test I'm doing, and how that relates to pure broad keywords, because mm. uh, to me, that was kind of a different thing. And then we're also going to talk about the secret theory of automated bids, and it's something you just dropped in cas- uh, casual conversation the other day, Chris, and it really <laughs> uh, kind of blew my mind in terms of like, yes, this is the way to think about automated bids, and when they work, and when sometimes they don't work. Uh, if you understand why uh, you're doing automated bids or the general theory behind them, it can help you understand the results you're interpreting. So uh, that helped me with this recent test. Uh, but before we get into that and be- before we get into our review of the week, we're going to hear from Chris about Optio and then we're going to jump into the show. Optio is the smarter way to manage Google Ads accounts. And if you would like to improve your efficiency with everyday management tasks, we want you to try Optio. It's a software that we have had as a sponsorship for a long time, and we've enjoyed working with them because we continue to get great feedback from our listeners. And it's it's the kind of tool that, you know, today we're talking about automated bids. If you've been listening to the show long enough, you know that automated bids, anything, you know, that's taken out of our hands is not something we're a big fan of. 
Optio is designed to work as a tool in your hand. You work on your campaigns, you improve your campaigns, you make the decisions. It helps you do that efficiently. So especially for agencies um, or freelancers like Jason and I who have our own accounts and we need to go through these accounts in a timely method, but still efficient method, this is a great tool to make that happen. So optio.com slash PSP2 to get an extended trial, not just the 30-day trial. You get an extended trial when you go to that URL and use the chat box down in the bottom right and let them know that you heard about the podcast uh, sponsorship and you want to try it out for eight weeks. opteo.com slash PSP2. Thanks, Chris. And uh, we'll start off this week with the five-star review of the week from Koval in Great Britain. Uh, five stars, Apple Podcasts. Thanks for doing that. When you guys do that, the, the show grows because they share it with more people. He says, the only podcast you should listen to. I like that. Wow. There you go. I, I'm new to Google Ads, and I only started using it a few months ago. But since listening to Chris and Jason, they have helped me and my business get over 700 conversions since July. I don't know what I'll do without you guys. Thank you for your knowledge and that you are sharing with us. Keep dropping bombs. Love from the UK. Well, Caval, I hope there's not something you know that I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it sounded like it's... You a- said without us. <laughs> are we... Well, we're not, we're not you, going anywhere. Are we planning on quitting anytime? Do I need to know something? That sounded very, very scary. I'm, I'm wondering if that... Uh, hey, Chris, why don't you uh, come to my office here? Yeah. <laughs> been a really really good oh no uh, five years and we've no, appreciated please. your no, contributions sir. to the firm i'm sorry no don't fire me okay so thanks for that five-star review chris let's talk about running automated bidding test mm. so let's just check in how do you feel about manual bids versus automatic bids after making fun of me at the open of the show <laughs> and what is, what would your current percentages be? Do you mm, think? Okay. Uh, in terms of how, how many accounts do you use manual on versus automated? What are your overall, overall thoughts on that divide? Okay. So first let's classify manual versus automated. Okay. Uh, manual is the one little hidden tiny option that's there when you hit the not recommended button in the bidding settings. <laughs> And then you scroll all the way down to the bottom. That's what we're defining as manual. So just to be clear, manual bidding happens at keyword and ad group levels. And it is the only option where you can actually manipulate bids. Automated, we're referring to as everything else. All the other bid strategies outside of that one manual strategy. Okay, so as far as my percentages go, it's grown a little bit. I think the last time we talked about this, I might have said 25%. Wow. So I would say maybe it's grown to a full third at this point. So maybe like a 33, 34% uh, range. Uh, how, uh, is the times you're doing automated bids? Yes. So about a wow. third of my accounts are running at least one of the accounts that I'm running in, or excuse me, at least one of the campaigns I'm running in all of my accounts, maybe about a third of those are automated of some kind. And I think the discussion that we need to have, which I don't know if it needs to even be this episode, but you know, the difference between automated and what we've found, you know, cause I have my preferences on the type of automated and I was looking at our notes and I don't necessarily try the same type of automated as you. So we can see. Yeah. And we'll, we'll talk about that with, you know, how to run these tests. I went with the target CPA on this example we're going to go through and, but I'd love at that point to get your thoughts on like, you know, what kind of, when you think of automated, what's the first thing you think about? What are you commonly doing? But uh, a third automated right now. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Yep. Where would you say you were at like three years ago? Three years ago? Oh gosh. It's probably, yeah, yeah, probably like uh, 2017. Yeah. Um, like 90% 10, manual, something like that? Yeah, that's, that's exactly what I was going to go. I was going to say 10% mm. automated. Yeah. Mm. Well, that's that's basically um, still where I am. I'm I'm at about 90% manual, and that's just where I am. I've told you in the past, like a lot of people say, well, you can do better 
with automated bids. And then I always, my comeback in my head is always like, well, no, you can do better. But I'm running my <laughs> manual bids. Come back in your head. Brain. <laughs> I, want, that's the, oh, I don't say that. That's the way but. Jason operates. He's like, oh, man, yeah, I would say that and I'd say that. But in reality, he says, oh, wow, that's really interesting. Thank you, sir. Very polite. Yeah, that's it. I, I like that you went with that strategy. Good, good call. All right. So, um, yeah, that's where I'm at, Chris. Um, I would say I'm where I always thought I, I where I always was. I, I run mostly manual. It works well for me. I think I know what I'm doing pretty uh, well. But where I always am is, yeah, I want automated bids to be even better. I want them to work better. Mm-hmm. That's where I've always been. If it, yeah. If I could flip a switch and I'm getting a thirty dollar cost per conversion, and I could get a client a twenty, then yeah, I'd like to flip the switch and get them a twenty, and still spend the full budget and get more conversions overall. It's just been, in my experience, I've been more able to get the results I want using manual bids, and I've also been in more control. So when clients say, "Hey, we need to ease yeah. up," yep. "Hey, yep. let's get more aggressive," I'm able to change very quickly, and that's that's helped me manage accounts for people. But um, I'd say what led me to running a test now, why run some automated bids now? Yeah. Two reasons. One is just in this account that I ran them in, we've had some long-term, it has a lot of campaigns. So one thing I'm able to do is I'm able to go, okay, overall, a lot of the campaigns are going great with manual bids. Let's keep doing that. The ones that have a problem, yeah, let's run an automated test. We don't have much to lose because they're not working that well already, the small amount of campaigns. So I was kind of in the mood to run a test. But the other factor that led me to running a pretty big test right now is I'm hearing more and more from people in like the Facebook group uh, for the patrons that we have. I'm hearing from more and more people that I respect telling me that automated bidding is getting better. And so as I hear that more, and I don't know if that's them just repeating things that they see right, or if people right. are actually experiencing better results, but it has been a while since I've dove into automated bids. So I thought, hey, I'm hearing good things from people I respect. Let's try it and see see how it's going. Have you been getting that vibe from people that it's better than it used to be? And I mean, it makes sense, but have you been hearing that? Um, I don't really talk to anyone. So it's kind of hard to answer. Uh, and we, we live in our silos as, as freelancers. Uh, you know what's sad is I could see you answering that same way with that same level of genuineness if you're at a cocktail party or something and someone comes up to you and goes, <laughs> what do you do? And you're like, oh, Google Ads Management. And they're like, oh, well, what do you network? Do you talk to people? Oh, yeah. what, what do you do to learn about? And you're like, I don't talk to anyone about yeah. it. And it's like, hey, I do a podcast with you every single week, bro. Like, you don't want to bring that up to people. I don't really talk to anybody yeah, about it. Nobody, I, no, nobody. I mean, I, I spend a lot of my day dispensing information, so I don't know that I. And, and then the only the only other person that I really talk to that I you know don't dispense information is you, yeah. and you don't have a whole lot of mm-hmm. strong opinion about the pros of it. Um, yeah. So well, let me ask you this: You see a lot of accounts with your training that you do. What are you seeing with automated bids compared to a few years ago? Do a lot more people come into your store, if you will, already running automated bids? Does anybody ever come in when you audit an account and train them on it? Do they? Do you ever see manual bids still out there? What are you seeing from the people? I'd be curious about that. Okay, now that I can definitely give an answer on because um, one thing... Now, this is a generalization. And of course, a lot of people I work with listen to the podcast and then hire me for consulting. But... So, so it may be a little biased, but I'll tell you, the better campaigns that I work with tend to have manual. And the ones that are newer and do a rather poor job tend to have automated. That's not always true, but that tends to be the case when people, you know, are, you know, when they listen to the podcast, they understand the more advanced side of Google ads, they tend to lean towards manual. Um, so as far as whether one's better than the other, I think just like our, our conversation last week, I think it has more to do with the use of the tool rather than the tool itself. Like you can have a really amazing hammer, but in the hands of me, it's going to be a crappy hammer, you know, 
but in the hands, it's not going to find a nail. Yeah, you're just going to be doing gonna kettlebell put... swings with it. You're going to be doing <laughs> push-ups with it. You're going to be figuring out what way can I use this hammer to make my muscles bigger there with CrossFit go. exercises. You're going to, I swear, if you saw a hammer right now after doing the CrossFit you do for mm-hmm. so many years, your first thought would be, oh, is this someone left it in the gym or something? I haven't seen this kind of <laughs> kettlebell yet. Guy. It's a new kind of dumbbell. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a weird shape. It's so strange. Now it's I mean that that's how I think of automated bids is it's a tool that can be used. It's a different kind of tool, but most of the time people like to pick up that tool and try it because it's simpler. You know, it's an automated. It's it's not. A, I like the way you're you're not emotional about it. You're like, yeah, it's it's part of Google Ads. You can use it. You don't have mm, to use mm-hmm. it. Sometimes I use it. Some situations I don't. Yeah, it's not a big deal. But when I hear from people about it, it's like, I don't know. They're like forcing me to use it. <laughs> right. And it's like, hey, we're just in a casual conversation here. Like, why are you so emotional about this? And then when I say I use manual, they judge me. And I don't know. I, I'm the same you way. It's, it's, you think it's insecurity? I, no, I think it's uh, I think it's the promise of it. I think it's, it's such a good sell. Like, yeah, get the most conversions possible. Why wouldn't you click that button? Yeah, get your target cost per conversion, mm-hmm. whatever conversion you want. Why wouldn't you hit that button to get that? Because that's, what, that's so, what they're told. That's what the buttons say. It says, hit this cost per acquisition, and you just kind of you know push it, and you assume that's going to be the best. So yeah, I'm, I agree. It's, it's easier to believe what we read rather than testing. And that's what we're talking about today is testing. And that's where the rubber meets the road. That's where you really find out, is it really worth you know, what it says. Yeah, and some people, they don't, you know, they're not in there every day battling the different situations that come up and um, changing strategies and all that kind of stuff. So they may not have a need to be in full control uh, like you can be with manual, but I'm where I always am. I like having it as an option. So I'm running this test. And um, the first question you ask yourself when you're running manual on a lot of campaigns, and then you have some problem campaigns and you're like, okay, I want to see if I can get these to perform better, what kind of automated bidding strategy uh, should you run as your test? And for me, on an account that gets lots of conversions, the only, and and also where I'm getting good feedback from my clients in terms of what kind of cost per conversion they want, the only automated strategy that made sense for me to run in this situation, lots of conversion data, and I'm getting good guidance from the client on what they want to achieve with their cost per conversion, was target CPA. Target cost per, so target CPA, tell people what that stands for, Chris. Cost per acquisition. In late- wrong. What? Wrong. You're wrong. You host a podcast on Google <gasps> Ads. You're wrong. What? What's I, I, I thought that too. I just, I hovered over target CPA and it says, set bids to get the most conversions possible while reaching your average cost per action goal. <laughs> cost per action. No. And I was, yes, yes, I'm looking at it right here. And I was just thinking how, when when I was talking earlier, I was thinking about CPA, target cost per conversion, target cost per acquisition. Some people call it a cost per lead. But here, now we enter a fourth one into the mix, a cost per action. Whatever. But they all mean the same thing, yeah, right? Yeah, it does. You know? Yeah, I guess. I, I, I can understand. So if they, because if it says acquisition, acquisition implies sale, you know, our revenue, but for lead generation, you know, a phone call is not an acquisition. It's just a lead. So I guess that makes sense. Or if you're, or if you're optimizing off of newsletter signups, there you go. it's not a lead yeah. basically it's an action. Yeah. So, or time on site or whatever. So yeah, target, but I, I thought the same thing before I read that target CPA, you put in a goal, your cost, I'm still going to call it cost per acquisition. Oh, That's me too. What I you can't tell me CPA what to say. Is. No, I'm not changing it. <laughs> yeah. So especially when we're all going to use uh, abbreviations anyway, yeah. acronyms. So target CPA, um, whatever your cost per conversion goal is, number goal, cost per conversion. I want a $50 cost per conversion. That's what you enter it in. I mean, it's obvious in my situation, getting a lot of conversions, getting good guidance on what we want that CPA to be to run this one. But let me ask you, when you're running your automated bid tests, when you're running automated bids, What's your breakdown in terms of all these strategies? How often are you running this one? Are there any other ones, tar- uh, any other automated bidding strategies you run often? Max clicks and maximize conversions. Those are my favorites. You put maximize conversions above target CPA and how often you, you use Yes, it. I do. I do. 
Wow. I like I like maximized conversions, and uh, the reason I like that is because and, and and it really has to do with the client. Um, let me tell you when I when I might flip flop that. It's usually default for me because a lot of my clients I work with are lead generation. I have a lot of e-commerce too, and this is when the rules might flip flop. But for lead generation, you know, acquisition of some kind that's not necessarily a revenue type of thing, or it's a mix between all of them. Yeah, I don't necessarily need the cheapest leads. I need just as many leads as I can get. You know, maybe it's a B two B company, a business to business company, and they only get like four or five a month. I don't want Google slowing down if they can't get the leads, you know, at, you know, a hundred dollars a lead. I don't want them slowing down or pulling down the search impression share or something like that. I just want max conversions possible. So that's what I usually go with. Now, if it's a e-commerce company and we get 20, 30, 40, 50 conversions a month, and I typically get, you know, a several a day with that client, Okay, then it's a numbers game. Then there's a plethora of that coming in, and I can say, let's be careful about which ones we bring in, you know, certain devices, certain audiences, things like that, and I can pull down the cost per acquisition. But um, it, it really has to do with the client. So most of the people I work with are lead gen, um, phone calls, you know, web forms, and so I go with max conversions. And then max clicks most clicks possible for the budget. And I'm assuming you do that when you don't have good conversion data or full conversion data. Right. Right. Sometimes it's just okay. about. So an example of that would be your, your target, you're tracking lead form completions, but you're not tracking phone calls. So you don't want to optimize off conversions because it's not full conversion. Data. Right. Right. And sometimes I just want to, you know, test the waters. And so I'll throw some kind of medium or high funnel keywords in there and just turn it on max clicks and put a $1 CPC max click and see what I can get. You know, worst case is what mm -hmm. I get 75 cent clicks that are junk. You know, it's worth testing. That's the kind of thing I might use it for when, when conversions are kind of taking a back seat to just quality of traffic. Oh, okay. So, so maximize clicks. It's not simply, the most clicks possible for the budget. That's what the strategy is, but you can put in a maximum CPC bid limit. Mm -hmm. So you're telling it, Hey, if you put in a dollar, Hey, yeah, get me the most clicks possible for the budget using an automated strategy, but I don't want to have more than a $1 bid on yep. any of these keywords. Cheap. I want cheap. Gotcha. Yeah. Give me cheap. And you, you always run a safety valve like that on there. Yeah, usually, you know, cause I'll have two okay. campaigns going. One will be low funnel, high intent type of stuff. And it'll be much higher CPC. And then I'll run another campaign that won't be that same type of keyword. And I don't want them mm -hmm. bumping heads, you know, against the same searches. So I put a cap on one and I'll let the other one run free. So that's, that's the idea. Yeah. And there's, I mean, the, the strategies, Chris, again, just on name only before seeing the performance, they are cool because target CPA, you get the exact conversion you want. Mm -hmm. That's the, what it's going for. Target impression share oh, i like that yeah. you can get sounds great the impression share you want target return on ad spend yeah i want a 300 percent return on my ad spend based on the conversion value <laughs> like that's great yeah. and then maximize conversion value different kinds of conversions can have different values associated with them get the most conversion value the thing is they're like they're awesome to to think about uh like, yes, this is the goal when you run Google Ads. These are the kind of goals you have. Like, I want the most conversions possible. I want the most return, that kind of stuff. So let me just ask you generally, what are you what are you seeing out there with the kind of results? How how close to the promise of these names does it usually perform? Maybe if it's like a back in the day, my take would be like, okay, you turn it on, you have a three to five day learning period, and then sometimes it works great, sometimes it doesn't. And then sometimes it works great and then stops working and you don't really know what to do. How has that take changed if it has? Is that still what you're seeing or have things, are things generally, once you kind of set it to max conversions, you're happy with it? Boy. Or is it a case by case? Yeah, that's, that's a tough one because, and I've done, I've been specifically doing this. If you were to look through my client accounts, you would see a lot of experiments going. Experiment for lots of different campaigns. You know, manual versus max clicks, manual versus CPA, 
uh, manual versus um, uh, max conversions. And I just do them back to back and I do them for, you know, three, four weeks. And I wish I could say there's a trend, but it's it's not. It, it seems like it, it's always a toss up. Sometimes I, you know, I get some that have just been killing it for years. And, you know, I'm like, they get lots of conversions. They have like a 12, 15, 20% conversion rate. And I think this is going to be perfect for max, max conversions. The CPC, you know, in the conversion rate go opposite directions. CPC goes way too high. Conversion rate goes way too low. And, I, and I'm like, okay, bite the bullet. I'm going to let it run. I'm going to keep it going. I'm going to see if it's going to work. Week three, work week four, it's still just killing and tanking the campaign. And it's, it's it seems like if there's anything... It's unpredictable. That's the only conclusion I can draw that's predictable is that it is always unpredictable. Well, it's good advice because if you think about it, there's think about how different, even in the same industry, different cities are. You could have like moving companies, one in Dallas, one in Chicago. What if there's just one moving company in Chicago that randomly gets a bunch of bunch of like venture capital startup money <laughs> and they bid way more than people normally bid yep. on Google Ads because they're trying to own the market and blah blah blah. If you're running a, a target impression share against those guys versus target impression share down in Dallas where everyone's kind of got lower bids, you're gonna have a different experience. So I think that's great advice. Understand the different strategies. But just know that the results could be anything. And as an advertiser, you you have to expect that it could come in any way and be on top of it and, and change as needed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, Chris, that leads you to once you pick out your strategy, for me, it was target CPA. How do you implement an automated bidding test? You kind of have two options, experiments or just updating your campaign. <laughs> oh, gosh. And, oh, don't laugh at me. That's what I did. No, I just did you I just, did. I don't want to deal. No, I no, I don't want to deal with more campaigns in this account. It has tons <laughs> of campaigns. I'm at my campaign limit threshold. What's that number? I don't know, but I've had it up to here, and I'm an above average tall guy. That's crazy. And I just don't want to see any more experience. I, d- I don't want things to be more complicated than they are. So for what I do, Chris... Not all the time, but what I sometimes do, I just I just let it rip. I just change the bidding strategy in the settings in the campaign. Wow. I put a label on the campaign saying um, automated bid strategy started this day. I, I don't put started because I want to keep the label short, but I put target CPA and then we're recording this on 11-12, so I would put 11-12-20. Okay. And then I would do a filter for that label. And so anytime I want, I can pull up that campaign and see how it's performing. And then I know when I'm looking at my comparisons on date ranges, I can go, okay, this started on November 12th. And I can compare that to previous data. The secret to not doing experiments, and then we'll you can tell us why they're so awesome, is you have to be able to get back to where you were with your manual bids. And for me, I always know how to kind of manage my ad group bidding and I can look at other campaigns in the account and I can very quickly, because I save filters and all that kind of stuff, get back to where I want to get back to. But if you can't do that, if you're going to have trouble getting back to where you were with your manual bids, if you have to get back there, then why are experiments so great? Like talk about the problem they solve. Yeah. And and I think there's a distinction here. So Jason, you're talking about campaigns that are problem campaigns, right? And I totally agree. I think if you have a campaign that's underperforming, you think, okay, I'm going to throw automated bids at this to see if it works and can perform better, bring it up to the level that I want. What I'm talking about in the other scenario is I have a campaign that's working to, you know, to to, to expectations And so for me to just change the strategy flat out. Where you have maybe device bit adjustments mm-hmm. and gender and age yep. and different keywords. That were, yeah, I get you. So I've put a lot of time into tweaking this and doing manual bids in the way exactly that I want. So the reason I do experiments is because I want to see, okay, I've got this campaign running along great. Hey, automated bids, come on in, do a test along with me. Can you beat what I'm doing? And it's a head-to-head race, 50-50 split. That's what I usually do. And I'll run it for however long I feel that it really, you know, can, you know, give enough data. Sometimes it's three weeks, four weeks, six weeks, something like that. And then once I feel like it's, you know, it's just not happening, it's consistently falling behind, 
or pushing forward, I'll then either stop it or apply it to the original campaign. So I, th- I think that's the difference. I'm, I'm doing it for because I want to push the envelope and get beyond what I'm doing and do even better. And you're kind of pulling along the... I literally don't know how you could do better <laughs> on campaigns where I'm doing manual right. bids and they're going well. Of course. Like I can't even picture... Like in in the in the space of a room, my ego is taking up so much space that there's not enough space in my mind to picture it going better. So yeah, right. that's why I generally do these tests when Makes sense. it isn't going well. And when it's not going well, it's not my fault. It just happens to not be going well yet. Right. But if I yet. had more time, I would get it. But sometimes I want to, I just want to test things out. That makes sense. No, that's a good advice, Chris. If you have something you really, really have fine tuned and don't want to ever lose run that experiment it keeps things separate and then you can get some some clean data um so then if you are running um a target cpa or you're running a max clicks or you're running impression share some of these automated strategies including conversion value return on ad spend you have to pick out numbers so what is your advice on like let's go with a couple common ones target cpa and then maximize clicks Max clicks, when you set your cost per click bid limit, how do you come up with that number? Oh, well. Is it the average that's been in an account and then you go a little bit beyond that or? Yeah, let, let, let's let assume that it's, you know, higher funnel, you know, less intent, wider ranging keywords than your original. So if you're doing a second campaign, yeah, I'll cap it at whatever that that original average CPC is. Assuming that's the strategy you're going with. But yeah, I guess in general, I just look at the other campaign or look at the current campaign. And somewhere b- ballpark around there. Yep, ballpark, yeah. Say, don't, you know, if, if the average CPC is seven, I say, well, don't go past eight. You know, don't start. I don't want you to overtake my other campaign or overtake the other experiment that I'm doing. Because then, like, if, you're, if your average cost per click is $4 on your manual campaign, manual bids, and then you're wanting to see how much better you could do maximize clicks, it doesn't really make sense to put, like, a $15 max clicks bid limit in there because then you're not really running the same thing. Because you're like, yeah, if I was willing to bid three times what I am now, I could probably get more clicks, but I'd run out of budget sooner. Mm-hmm. So it's a whole different situation. Yeah, yeah. I want, a, I want a fair fight. Yeah, that makes sense. Fair fight. Target CPA. They give you a recommended target CPA usually um, based on, I guess, your the data they're seeing on your campaign. When I picked out that number for this recent test, I went with the goal that my client has given me. And my goal that they have given me, I'm hitting it on other similar campaigns in different areas, um, different locations. And it's not too far off. The problem campaigns, like maybe the problem campaigns were a double mm. compared to what we would be wanting to get. So I just went with what we we would want to get because I see myself doing it with other campaigns and we're only off by double. So I figure Google could figure out a way to kind of like trim the fat and get it down. Maybe volume gets hurt, but I figured it's realistic. How do you think about a target CPA? Is it basically what you want it to be, or do you get some concern sometimes? Like say you get a new client, say their cost per conversion is $400, say they want it to be $50. (laughs) Would you just go in there and go $50 or would you go have thoughts like, Hey, I've been running, they've been running this for years and it's never even gotten close. Is that realistic? Do you ever use that word realistic? Yeah. I, I go with whatever Google suggests on that initial setup. I mean, that's, that's what I always do. Now, at, at once I've passed that point, once it's been running for a while and it's, and it's hitting that, then, you know, you go back to it and it may give you an updated goal. You can go down. I think that's a Chris Schaefer special tip. I think you've taught us one time that if you go back into the settings and mm-hmm. then it'll give you a new like one. like you're going to change your targets to be, it'll give you a new one. Is that yeah, correct? Yeah. It, it'll, it, okay, after that's a time. A, that's a good place to check after a few weeks. Yeah. Okay. After a time. And, and, and I'll tell you the other thing too. If you find that, you know, the number that Google suggested and you're getting really bad search impression share, you're, you know, you're running out of budget. Not spending your budget. Yeah, that kind of, if you're having the issue, the train's not even leaving the station on some of this stuff. It's just not, it's not going anywhere. Go in and bring the target CPA up, you know, 50%, 100%, something like that, because it has no gas to go anywhere. It's not going to able to move. 
Alternatively, you put a target CPA in there of $20 and your search impression share is 50% and you're missing out on 50% of impression share due to budget. Mm -hmm. So you have that common thinking we always talk about like, okay, I'm spending my full budget. There's other impression share out there to get. Yep. If I just had more budget, that means I probably could bid lower and still show up high enough sometimes to spend the full budget. Yep. Let me get more conversion. So I'm going to lower my target CPA goal. That kind of Google Ads manager thinking still applies, even though you have an automated strategy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, I... I guess this this is where it starts to fall through, you know. I mean, how how far can you analyze it and push the system? You know, it's a it's an automated you know algorithm that's running. Can you overthink it and try and force it to do well, the way that you would do I, manual? I guess it de I guess it depends on what strategy you're doing because if you're doing max conversions and you're at fifty percent loss due to budget in terms of impression share then the system itself should recognize that, hey, they could be bidding lower, getting more conversions for the same budget. So they want max conversion. So it's going to do it for, it should, for yeah. you, ideally. But if you're doing target CPA and you've told it $20 cost per conversion, yeah. it's going to get you a $20 cost per conversion with no regard for search impression share. And I think you have to have that skill set to judge the other factors mm -hmm. and then give it better target CPA information based on the new data that you have. And Yeah, and, and, and to fill the... Fill in the hole there. If you give it too low of a number, this is what it's going to look like. If you're doing CP, target CPA and you and you've been getting leads for fifty dollars a lead, and you go in there and give it ten dollars, the way your campaign's going to run is it's immediately going to start puttering out. It's going to start getting one click a day, maybe no clicks, you know, for a couple days, very few impressions. Some clicks will be really high CPC. Then you don't get anything the rest of the day. You know, you get it, it, it's going to kind of go wonky on you. So that's what that looks like when you, um, you know, when you when you force the system to try and um, get too too high of a goal. Now, Chris, when you set up in your case, most of the time an experiment versus just updating the campaign, or in my case, with this one, I just updated the campaign. Let's talk about time. What are your time expectations on how long you're going to run an experiment, assuming you do a 50-50 split and not some kind of like 90-10 and you just want to get some data yeah. and let it go for a very long time? But 50-50, are you usually thinking like, I'm going to check in on my automated bid test once a month and make a decision after a month? D do you let it go a quarter? Like when you're running 50-50, how often do you find yourself like – how long do you usually find it to take to call a winner? Uh, Can you even answer that? Because it depends on spend. But what what do you average? You know. Well, I, that's why I like experiments is because what I can do is I can say I always have a pace setter, right? My original is my pace setter. And if my original is going up and down with the, the industry, you know, things are slow. It's it's Christmas time or it's or it's summertime. You know, it, it's it's equally going to be slow you know, for those times of year or good for those times of year. I, I want I want to jump into this. I know you have other notes here, but I'm biting at the the bit here, chomping at, chomping at the bit here. I want to know what your results were. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about your results. And I want to talk about your results as soon as I remind you guys that you have not signed up for Optio. Optio.com slash PSP2. You heard me talk about it about 30 minutes ago. And I got news for you. It's still the best. It's still the best solution. You're listening to this podcast because you haven't reached the greatest level of Google Ads yet. Okay? Listen, this is the second read-through of my, my sponsorship for this. So it usually gets a little looser. And so I'm just going to give it to you straight, you know? Um, try it. We pour our hearts out every week and we get naked and we just shake our bodies in front of you so, so you can see all the the shame that we have and we're asking you to just go try optio because we think it's good our sponsors really want us to communicate how good it is and i think we do but you have to take that last step so please help a podcaster in need optio.com slash psp2 okay chris i've got some results for you one of uh, the test it has we're 11 days in and one of the tests were only two days in, 
But before I give you the results, I just want to talk about how do you judge results? There's two things you can do, data, but I want to put this out there. Don't forget gut feel, because I know you like to run your little experiments and they give you those nice two rows and it says, this campaign got this percentage Mm -hmm, conversion mm -hmm. rate, this campaign got that one, your experiment, and you're like, oh, winner, winner, and then you just pick the winner. Hey, don't forget about gut feel. I mean... And maybe you don't have to deal with this because your gut feel is intuitive and you're like, yeah, I'm not going to declare an experiment a winner after two days. But for people who are new to the experiments and new to doing this, they have to remember like, hey, just because one, the experiment has a conversion rate that's like three times as good as the regular campaign, that doesn't matter at all if you're only a few days into the test. Right. So don't forget gut feel like, hey, is this too good to be true? Hey, do I really think I can get a a 90% conversion rate or or even a 50%? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I just, I don't know. I'm a gut feel Google Ads mm-hmm. manager. And how can I do gut feel if all I'm doing is just, oh, follow the numbers, follow the numbers until you've got a totally screwed up strategy because you don't know how to follow numbers. Yeah. That's its own skill set. I'll, I'll tell you one thing. Uh, if, if there's anything that can can really screw up uh, your campaign is you have some loose keywords in there. And let, let me do an example for you, Jason. Uh, here's Roger. Okay. Hi, Roger. He, he doesn't speak. So I'm just going to speak for him. Roger has a great manual campaign. Okay. And he is doing really well. He has bids at different levels and, you know, he's even doing down to the keyword. He's setting up an experiment with maximized conversions. He turns it on and immediately, just like you said, he has a 50% conversion rate, 75% conversion rate. He's getting amazing numbers. What Roger doesn't realize is with his manual campaign, he had a few broad keywords in there and those broad keywords were bid very low. So they were getting very little traffic and he wasn't really paying much attention to them. But when he turns on automated campaigns, those broad keywords can just shoot to the sky. And guess what they can be getting? Brand keywords. They can be getting brand keywords oh, and bringing in wow. things that you never had any problems with before. So suddenly, these little issues that you are not having problems with in your manual can become glaring problems with automated because... Even though it looks pretty yeah, on the surface. it may look great. Right. So I think that's you know a good example of oh. gut feel like... Check it out. Like that doesn't seem the gut right. feel, but also the brain. Yeah, yeah. It, it that gotcha. that doesn't seem right. You know, that's great advice. I see that happen all the time. That's such great advice because you're so preconditioned to want the test to go great because you're like, yeah, target <laughs> yeah. TPA. It's smarter than me. It's the machine. Blah blah blah. Oh, of course, it was ten times better than me. No, let's dig it uh, level deeper. And alternatively, sometimes the test can be going horrible maybe max clicks or something. And it's because you had a few broad keywords that you were bidding very low manual max clicks, pulled them up. And all of a sudden you're getting horrible traffic in the max clicks campaign, but really it's not about the the max click strategy. It's about you left these two broad keywords in there. Mm -hmm. And if you were to take those out, then maybe the rest of the max clicks would do great. So I like that. Don't forget the gut and don't forget the brain. So Chris, the results, quickly I'll go through the two-day one just because it's so early, so early, and then we'll talk more about the 11-day one. But you know what? I'll just delete that two-day one because it's only two days. You gotta, you yeah. can't forget your brain. I feel it. I might take my own advice. Yep. Why would I be looking at it after two days? Because I need content for a podcast, and I stretched it. <laughs> but actually, the podcast took longer than we thought, and Chris frowns every time I talk mm-hmm. now because he's like, why is he still going? Why is he still Stretching going? Stretching it. And I can cut out two days. Yeah, so you use your brain and your gut feel. So... 11 days in, Chris, work this out on a handful of problem campaigns. Uh, I'm not running an experiment in the traditional sense like these. I updated these campaigns, but I am running an experiment in the sense that I can look back at previous data on these campaigns, and I can also compare them to other campaigns where I'm running manual. Uh, We're 11 days in. So let's first talk about the date range over the date range data where we're talking in just full numbers and not like percentages. 11 days in versus the previous 11 days. Clicks and impressions and cost. Clicks and impressions are down 40%. Gosh. 11 days versus 11 days. Mm. And cost is down 60%. And overall conversions are actually pacing 
to be up 15% over a full month. So my cost is down 60%. My impressions and clicks are down 40%, but I'm pacing to have 15% more conversions. So your, so your, so, your CPC went up and your conversion rate went up. Uh, no, uh, CPC is down 25%. Click to rates down 5%. Uh, CPA is down 50% because oh. my cost per clicks down What? and my convert here's the bit, here's how, where it all makes sense. How you can have so many fewer clicks, so many fewer, so much fewer cost and actually be pacing to get 15% more conversions overall. My conversion rate is up 50%. So we're running on less of my keywords. We're running on less impressions. We're paying less for the keywords that we're still running. They're still showing me mm -hmm. on. And my conversion rates up 50%. So everything's down except what I want to be up, which is conversion rate and overall conversions. That's okay. I'll tell you, I'm surprised. My experience with automated conversion bidding is this conversion rate will go up, but so will CPC and therefore clicks overall will drop. So assuming you're limited by budget, you're going to be able to get less clicks because your CPC is going to go up, but it goes up because Google has that black box of mystery and they know something and it's working a little bit better. So a lot of times it ends up being a wash for me. You know, maybe I'm getting a $50 cost per acquisition on my ma my manual campaign and then Google gets me a $45 cost per acquisition. And I'm like, the trade-off isn't worth it here. You know, I'd rather have a little more control than get five bucks less on cost per acquisition. You know, what's interesting about this campaign, it makes sense to me because on this account, we have very specific instructions on kind of where we need to be with different kinds of keywords. We want to see our ads. We want to stay aggressive. And... Because of that, the bidding strategy, it has not always been wed to the conversions and cost per conversion as closely as it should have been. It's kind of been mixed into an, a big account with lots of conversions. So if this one happened to have a much higher than we wanted cost per conversion, but we were still kind of treating it the same as the overall goal in terms of just like showing where we need to show and showing on the kind of keywords we show, it kind of, I wasn't bidding it manually to the exact cost per conversion goal in an aggressive sense. Like I didn't go, okay, cost per conversion is $20. I'm killing off keywords that don't have a good cost per conversion and I'm bidding down ones mm. that I can get down there. It wasn't like that because we had alternative goals of like, hey, we want to be in the auction. We want to advertise there. This is what we do. Why shouldn't it work? And so there was kind of a mixed management on there. And then I turn on the automated strategy and it goes, no, you have all this data we know how to get your cost mm -hmm. per conversion down by half to your goal where you want it. We're not going to have any of this human please the client pressure on us. We're just going to look at the hard numbers and we don't care if this is a great topic for you and you want to get clicks from this and this is where you want to see your ad. It ain't performing. Yeah. So we're going to crush the bid on yeah. it. And I think that's why bids went down a ton, uh, clicks went down a ton, costs went down a ton, but conversion rate went up a ton. Um, I think it could just be an outlier. It could be a lucky start, but I think this campaign has a ton of data and I think Google looked at it and said, no, we can get your cost per conversion down to where you want it, but it may not be on all the kind of keywords you want, yeah. but we're just going to do it. Now, the one final interesting piece of data here, Chris, absolute top position. And by the way, it starts at a pretty high absolute top percentage. It only went up 1%. Okay. But absolute top percentage went up uh excuse me only one percent but top went up 49 percent so it pulled up the bids that we are getting conversions for the keywords we are getting conversions from it it pulled those ones up quite a bit again overall cost per click down 25 percent but top percentage impressions up 50 percent so i think it was finding keywords that maybe over long stretches of data we get conversions from that I wasn't bidding strongly enough on and it raised those up. Maybe that's what it did. Yeah. It's kind of hard to know, but aren't those weird results? That's the one thing I pull from this is automated bidding does not have an ego. 
that's I think or pressures, yeah, or or human pressures. They can yeah. you know, it can make decisions without being married to one keyword that used to do really well three months ago, and we still have hope. It does not have an ego. It does not have any type of you know, uh, man, connection to 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 one thing. That there might be. I, I think I'm going to develop a slap in the face Google Ads strategy. I'm going to describe that in Patreon for you. Okay. And I think I've come up with a unique scenario where an automated strategy like Target CPA can give you a refresher and help you look at your campaign you've been staring at for five years in a different slap way. Slap in the face strategy. And it slaps you in the face. Yep. So, okay. Chris, don't worry about the podcast next week. I've got it. <laughs> and uh, Okay. We'll preview it in Patreon. Well, guys, uh, we are about to close the curtain uh, for all of you coach riders here and we're going to just dive into first class which is our patreon group if you are listening to this uh mid-november know that you could join us for our top tier super patron level and join us on a video chat the only way that you can meet with us together and chat and ask questions and just be with an amazing group of guys honestly and ladies are welcome too um, but uh, it happens to be all guys right now. Uh, but uh, it's a great chat. Um, you can join at our super patron level um, and be a part of that. It's once a month. Uh, and that's coming up this week. Always, uh, always exciting. So if you don't believe me, then I guess that's fine. We'll be back next week with the same great content. Thank you for listening.